Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, I mean, based on the work that I've been doing with, with our customers, uh, you know, we know that companies are getting many uh, events, business data, right? And then over time, they have created a number of architectures, use a number of technologies to, you know, process those events and also uh, run their business. And, you know, you have multiple workloads, right? You have legacy applications, package applications. You also have, you know, things like microservices and now functions, right? So, uh, you know, in order for the companies now to compete, they need to integrate not only internally, but also with third-party vendors and also with uh, public cloud services. Right, and but we know that there is no uh, one-size-fits-all tool. So no single tool can manage all workloads, and that's why you know companies need to have a strategy for where to run this. And you know, moving those workloads to the cloud is not going to change that fact, right? So you're going to need uh, you know a number of platforms that will allow you to run your containers, your applications, and your functions. Now uh, today we're going to concentrate on functions. And you know, the reason for that is because you know, the industry analysts, the tech press, researchers, and Google Trends agree that the serverless, uh, serverless wave is happening, right? So you have the public cloud service providers like um, AWS providing Lambda, uh, Google Cloud Functions, Azure Functions, and there are a number of open source projects now. Um, you know, some of them were designed or were not designed with Kubernetes in mind. Others just offer a plugin to run on Kubernetes. But the most interesting category is those open source projects that are running natively on Kubernetes, either on premises or across multiple clouds. So Pivotal's contribution to this uh, fast movement is Project Riff, which is open source. And Riff, uh, it's basically a Kubernetes extension. It's a Kubernetes native service that allows you to run you know, functions triggered uh, by events. Now, with Reef, you can run uh, functions you know, anywhere, on your laptop, on your data centers, and also across multiple uh, cloud providers. So um, you know, today, we're going to use an application just to illustrate how Reef works. So this application is available on GitHub. It's public, like anything of Pivotal. And, um, we have uh, the ability to vote for our favorite technology just by mousing over uh, these bubbles. Then the middle section is going to show uh, the function replicas processing our votes. And the bottom section is just going to showcase the stream processing and time window capabilities of Ref. Now, how this works is the application is going to send the votes as events to the internal HTTP gateway uh, from Ref, which in turn, it's going to transform those events and publishes them to a votes topic in the event broker that Reef manages for you. And now your functions are packaged as containers. They are you know, Docker containers. And uh, we're going to have two uh, node functions and one Java function. Um, now, you know, the beauty of this is that your functions don't need anything, or don't need to write code. Your developers don't need to write code for the functions. That's, that's something that, that Reef provides out of the box. Now, um, you know, all you need to do is declare what input topic, what output topic you want to subscribe to, and the messages are going to flow uh, automatically. And uh, you know, uh, two of our functions are right into Redis, and Redis is providing, just for demo purposes, is providing uh, the information back to the dashboard, so the dashboard can display voting data. And uh, last but not least, you can scale your functions, so uh, that happens automatically. Reef is going to take care of that based on event traffic. All right, so you, uh, you want to see a riff in action? Cool. All right, so I mean, the first thing we're going to do is we need to install a riff on Kubernetes. Um, it can run on any Kubernetes distribution. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, configure Helm. So Helm is the package manager uh, of Kubernetes. Uh, we have a few Helm charts that are going to help us with the deployment. And um, the Helm chart is going to configure Kubernetes resources that are uh, uh, particular to Riff. So the first one is the HTTP gateway, which is the entry point to Riff. It will allow you to process events, either request reply, right? If your consumer wants to wait for a response, you can do that, or just fire and forget. It's your choice. Uh, and the uh, Kafka and Zookeeper uh, resources are basically the event broker, where all the events are going to come and go. 
And uh, we have two controllers, the function controller, which manages the life cycle and scaling of the functions, and also the topic controller, which manages the, the life cycle of the topic. And um, you know, let's say you want to create a topic with 10 partitions. That's the function of the topic controller. And these two controllers talk to the Kubernetes API to, to, do, its job, to do their job. So let me go to um, my dashboard. So for this demo, I'm using uh, Pivotal Container Service. You might have heard of this uh, product. It's a, it's a certified Kubernetes distribution that is you know, built on top of Cloud Foundry Container Runtime. So it's running on GCP. Um, and let me show you the Bosch view of this. Oh, I got disconnected. Um, package these functions. So these functions are you know, basically Docker containers. And what you need to do is uh, you need to get an image from us. So we provide a number of images out of the box for the different programming languages. So Node, Java, Go, Python, and a command invoker. So we call that the function invoker. And on top of that, we're going to uh, put your function. Right, and in order for you know for us to simplify your, your job, we're providing a Rift build command. So there is a Rift command line interface, and there is a command that will allow you to build your functions. Now you can push your your uh, created image uh, to your preferred container registry. It can be you know something public, like in my case, or your private uh, container repository. Now, oh, it's important to point out that invokers are pluggable. So, you know, we support a number of programming languages, but you know, you can install them as needed based on your on your uh, developers' uh, requirements. So, let me uh, just. them to, to riff, right? 
So how do we do that? Um, you know, like any application, if you guys are using Cloud Foundry or something similar, we just need to provide a manifest, right? We need to tell Riff how to manage our functions and topics. So there is a topics file that, that tells Riff, I need this particular topic and these are the number of partitions, right? So I have two topics, one with 10 partitions, the other one which is one partition. And then you have the function metadata in which you say, okay, where can I find my image, right? So at the bottom, you see the image URL. Um, then you also tell Riff what the, what's the input and output topics and also uh, the idle timeout in case you want you know, this function to expire after X number of seconds. Okay, and then the Riff apply function um, or command is going to deploy your functions to, to Riff. So let's take a quick look at that. Riff is going to create a function pod, and it has two containers inside. One is your function container with the invoker and your code, and the other uh, container is a sidecar. You don't have to worry about it. It's a proxy that, that uh, Riff manages for you every time you deploy a function. So it's basically a proxy, a layer of indirection, so that the function container can communicate with the event broker. And uh, you know, it talks natively using the broker API, and it talks uh, to the function container using gRPC, which is a bidirectional uh, protocol, right? And that enables uh, the stream processing magic that you're gonna see um, in a few minutes. Now, that's it. So your functions are up and running. So we install Riff, uh, we build the containers, and um, you know, we deploy the functions. So now we're ready to deploy the application. So this step is required only if you have you know, an application that you want to um, deploy. So, so start voting for your favorite technology. So we're just gonna wait uh, a few minutes, or a few seconds. Yeah, GCP is pretty good. It's coming. So, just wait until the application comes up. Is that the right IP? Yeah, that's the right IP. Okay, so we have now the application, it's public. Uh, if you mouse over, you're gonna start you know, uh, uh, casting your vote for your favorite technology. Again, the middle section uh, is, so basically the function controller is gonna start publishing events saying, uh, these are the number of replicas that I'm running for each function. So we are capturing that. And you know, if you deploy more functions, you're gonna see that uh, changing dynamically. So it's pretty cool. Now that we have this up and running, uh, let me show you something else. Um,
scale in um, nature <clears throat> of the function controller, the, the first thing it's going to do is going to look at the queue length of the event broker to determine do I need more instances or not. And then it's going to interact with the Kubernetes API to add more replicas. So it goes from first from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to n. And you can specify the max number of replicas. Right? There is a max replica attribute that will help you, uh, you in your function uh, YAML. You'll see that. Now, um, when, you, when you want to do uh, you know, something like this, uh, you just need to wait a little bit to see how it, it scales down. Let me show you that. It's still processing. But you're going to see a number of instances now terminating, oh, unless you guys are doing something. Yeah, I see people voting. So when you stop voting, you're going to see all the functions stop running. Uh, OK. Oh, someone is still voting. OK. So now the functions are terminating automatically. You don't need to do anything. It's just, again, the function controller looking at the queue and saying, well, I don't need as many instances. And you know, at some point, um, there is going to hit the idle timeout. The last instance is going to say, you know, I don't have any more events to process. And based on the idle timeout that we define, it's just going to terminate. Okay, so how are we doing on time? Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, so stream processing. You saw uh, the, the bar chart, right? So what's happening is so we have a small uh, reactor function, and it's doing two things. So the bar charts are basically a fixed window of two seconds each. So you know, we're just showing the number of votes every two seconds. And the shaded chart was the sliding window, right? So we have a tumbling window, which are the bar charts, and also the, uh, the sliding window. So every 60 seconds, we're capturing the number of votes, and we're emitting that information every two seconds. That's why you see uh, the shade uh, changing a little bit. So like this. Uh, we also have a Node.js implementation of this function. So we're supporting uh, streaming for both Java and Node.js at the time. Um, so if you want to give it a try, the GitHub repo is, is public again. Now, uh, some of the use cases, uh, you know, I would say, you know, start with uh, a small use case, right? I mean, start small and make sure that there is business value in the use case that you want to implement. And you know, take an architecture first approach. Look at your architecture and see if there is a component that can be replaced by a function. And of course, use Rift to give it a try. Um, so, but you know, we see uh, a number of use cases. It depends on the SLAs, right? The, the um, um, near real-time nature of your business. You know, can you afford eventual consistency and all that? So you need to take those factors into consideration and then you know apply. Uh, that accordingly. Then what's next? Um, you know, the, the project is under a heavy development. Uh, we just released version uh, 006. So if you want to contribute, uh, you can just go to the project grid and, and add your, your, um, you, you know, your issues uh, in there. That's how we define the roadmap. So what we want to right now, um, is the Kafka broker, the default, uh, but we want to add support for other event brokers from AWS, uh, Google Cloud, and also Azure, um, RabbitMQ, and Redis Streams. Um, the streaming support is just currently for Java and Node, but you know we have Go, we have Python, and we are planning now that gRPC is the official way to communicate the sidecar and the function container. Uh, we want to add um, streaming support for all the remaining invokers. And in terms of auto scaling, you know, we're continuing to refine the uh, auto scaling algorithm. It's it's not, you know, it's not uh, where it needs to be just yet. But uh, you know, we have a component inside now, uh, inside Rift now, that will tell us how the algorithm is performing. So there is a simulator in there that can provide a lot of information for us. And then in terms of security, we're exploring uh, uh, the possibility of using Istio. It still uh, you know, provides end-to-end -end encryption. It can manage uh, TLS certificates. 
So you know, things are, are you know, very exciting. If you want to see what's going on, what's coming, you can you know, take a look at the GitHub repo. And there is an issues section there that you can, that you can read. Now, if you want to learn more about um, Riff, you know, you have the GitHub repository, the website. The website is amazing. It has uh, several tutorials. You can run Riff on Minikube. You can run it on GKE, uh, uh, vSphere, etc. And the demo, again, is public. So uh, that's the URL if you want to use it. And um, again, Riff is going to be the basis for our upcoming product called Pivotal Function Service. So keep an eye on that. And if you are interested in running Pivotal Cloud Foundry on premises, you're just getting started. Uh, you know, take a look at the Pivotal Ready architecture. The Dell EMC team is has a booth, so they can you know talk to you about how they are doing uh, you know a, a reference architecture implementation of Cloud Foundry uh, and the container service um, on BX Rail. So that is um, you know something to consider. And you know, last but not least, uh, Spring Wine's coming. So if you wanna, uh, you know, take advantage of the discount, that's the code that you need to use. And uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you there, seeing you there, because I'm I'm gonna be there. Uh, so that's it. Questions, comments.
go there now. Um, uh, please give it a try. It's, it's very easy to use. Um, you know, you saw installing Rift was just like a couple of minutes. So you can just uh, run it on your laptop or Minikube and, and you can get started that way. Yeah, so it, it's on any Kubernetes distribution, so it runs on top of it. More questions? No? All right. You've been an awesome audience. Thank you. <laughs>